give you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so hope you got it. I do. So, okay, we're here on Ms. Vanna's uh, motion, so Ms. Vanna, you may begin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the department filed a motion to disrupt a monitored return, um, and we would like to put on some evidence. I would go ahead and um, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody ha else has any openings, but that's mine. <coughs> Hold on. Hold on. Can y'all hear me? Yes, Judge. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, you <clears throat> Sorry, you froze up on me. So I heard you say something. I don't know if anybody else has any, and then you cut out. Okay. Um, I just stated in my opening, Judge, that we filed a motion to disrupt a monitored return, um, and um, we would like the court to consider all the evidence and make a decision uh, for what's in the best interest of the children. Okay. Um, I read your motion and I read Ms. Wright's uh, response. So um, I'm, I, I know where y'all are coming from. So, okay. Okay, Ms. Vanny, you can begin, please. Thank you, Judge. I'll call Ms. Brooklyn Gilmore. And how long have you been the caseworker? Um, uh, probably like eight months. So, uh, good, the majority of the case, is that right? A lot of the case. Okay. And can you tell me, um, before the holidays, did you go to visit Miss Serena Groth? I did. Okay. And about when was that? Um, it was Friday the 22nd. Okay. And around what time did you go visit? About five. Okay. In the afternoon, is that right? Yes. yes. Okay. And when you, uh, did you go by yourself or did you go with somebody? I was by myself. And um, when you arrived, what did you observe? I observed an individual in the vehicle, um, in her vehicle, laid, kind of laid down. Um, and as soon as I pulled up, they saw me, grabbed his cigarettes, and he left. Okay. And did I heard grab cigarettes then skipped out and then left but was in between uh, so he he left on foot he opened the door and left on foot okay and and you you to me like that what did somebody who said something this is, this is fucking stupid i'm like i have to work i have a job Hold on. You need to mute yourself if you're not the one talking. Nobody talks other than the witness and the lawyer that's asking questions. You'll get your turn in a little bit. Um, Miss Gilmore, when you um, so when you arrived, how close were you to the vehicle and the person who was inside? Very, very close. Like if you were to park in a parking lot. Okay. And um, do you see the person that you saw here today? Yes. Okay. And who, who was it? Christopher Garner. Okay. And you see Christopher Gardner on the screen today. Is that right? I do. Okay. And is that the person that you saw in yes. Ms. Groff's vehicle? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did you take, did you take, uh, try to take any photos? I did. However, he was going away from me. Um, so it was very difficult to do so. Okay. What did you do um, after he exited the vehicle? I got out of my vehicle and I went out immediately to try to take pictures. Okay. Um, were you able to take any good photos? Not any great photos because they were going away from me and there was a bunch of leaves and trees. <clears throat> okay. Um, what did you do after that? I then called my boss. Okay. And got back in my car only because... I'm nine months pregnant and I didn't know what was, <laughs> I was by myself, so. Okay. Um, and after speaking with your boss, what did you do after that? I was told to go inside and to, uh, well, first I was told to talk to the items um, and then have a discussion with Ms. Groth. Okay. And did you do that? I did. Okay. Um, let's see here. When you spoke to Ms. Groth, um, what did you ask her? I'd like to uh, uh, to also point out that I had called, you know, uh, Ms. Collins, and then I called Susan, and then Susan had offered to help because the house is so small, 
and I didn't want to have uh, any conversation in front of the kids. Um, so that's when I waited on on Miss Potts to get there. And then that's when the conversation happened. Okay. And where did you speak to Miss Groth? I spoke to her inside while the kids were outside or the bigger kids were outside. Okay. And um, what did you ask her? I had told her or I had asked her uh, why Christopher Garner was in um, her vehicle. And she had told me that it wasn't him. Okay. And who did she um, explain was in her vehicle? Um, Her neighbor named Mikey Cherry. Okay. Um, Did you, have you seen a photo of Mikey Cherry? Did she show you? Yes, she did. Okay. Did that look, the person that you saw, did that look anything like Mikey Cherry? No. Okay. Um, And what did you do after that? I told her that um, I asked her to stay inside with the two younger so I could go talk to the two olders. Um, However, I I wasn't able to. She followed me out. Um, And then I had interacted with the kids a little. And then I told them to come to show me their room. And so that's when we went inside. Okay. Um, You said that she followed you outside when you wanted to talk to the children privately. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Did you ask her to stay inside? I did. Okay. Um, When you were outside, um, what happened? Did you talk to the children in front of their mom outside? No, I was just interacting with them a little bit. And then I had asked them to show me their room. And then that's when um, we went into their room. Okay. And did Miss Groth follow you again? I wasn't aware of it until I had left. Like I was done, like I was done talking to them, but yes. Okay. Which was very quickly. <laughs> right. And what um what did you do after that, after your visit with Miss Groth and the children? Um, I had left the residence and um talked just talked to my boss about what had happened. Okay. Did you enter in, into any agreements with Miss Groth? Uh that day. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I had told her the importance of of Christopher Garner not being around. Okay. Did you enter any safety plans with Ms. Groth later not on? That, yes, later on. Okay. And what was the safety plan? The safety plan was um, just for her, or for Christopher Garner not to be around the children. Um, and if he ever were to be on the property, that she'd take the proper steps to make sure he was removed. Okay. And isn't there a court order that states that Mr. Gardner is not to be anywhere around the children? Yes, there is. Okay. Um, So that is already a court order. Is that right? Yes, it has been for, I feel like the majority of the case. Okay. And um, did Ms. Groth sign the safety plan? She eventually did. Um, However, um, her attorney advised her that they didn't agree upon it because of what it, it stated of what I saw happened. Okay. And has Mr. Gardner participated in any services for the department? No. Okay. Has he drug tested for the department? Once in the very, very, very beginning of the case, I believe a year ago. Okay. And does the department believe that, um, that Mr. Gardner is a danger to the children? Absolutely. Okay. And um, if he's around the children, do you believe that they are in danger? Yes, that's why this case occurred in the beginning was because of them two being together. Um, And so what is the department asking the court for today? A disturbed monitored return. And do you believe that's in the best interest of the children? Yes, I believe that this case occurred due to um, the both of them being together and violence occurring with substances happening. And I believe um, that it is in the best interest of the kids. Also, did you ask Miss Serena Groth to submit to any drug testing after that day? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, and what type of test did you ask her to submit to? Hair follicle and a UA. And did she do that? I got the UA back, but not the hair follicle, but I am assuming she did both. Okay. And what was the result of the UA? 
uh, the UA was negative. Uh, the hair follicle haven't got back yet. Okay, I'll pass the witness. Anybody have, excuse me, anybody have any questions, Ms. Gilmore, Ms. Wright? I do, Judge. Uh, Ms. Gilmore, how far away were you, did you say you were from Mr., from the vehicle when you took the photograph? <coughs> vehicle? Are you cut out? Sorry, did you ask how far was I from the vehicle? Correct. As close as uh, if you were to park in a parking lot, like ne right next to each other. Okay. And when you, 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 let me back up. You've never met Mr. Garner prior to today. Is that correct? I've seen him. I've never met him. And what, what have you, what has been your experience with him? What have you seen of him prior to today? I've seen him walking down the street um a few vi a visit prior and then i've seen him in a di from a distance in burger king where he, he works okay and you uh so the photograph that you sent um could you do you think you could tell that it was mr garner at all i feel like the haircut's very similar that's the only way that i could take a photo um but you see he has hair on his head today is that correct I see that he has hair on the on the top. And what about the sides? It looks shaved like the picture. And the picture that you sent is the the person um completely bald headed? No, it had hair. He had hair on the top with it shaved on the bottoms. And did you uh so you didn't get out of your vehicle immediately to see yes, I did. did you get out and talk to Mr. Garner? I didn't have enough time. He went the opposite direction from and me. You couldn't snap a picture of his face as he was walking away. He was walking the opposite direction of me. And you couldn't snap a picture. I did the back of him. And how far away for, were you from him when you took that photo? I mean, distance enough to see his head. How far away approximately? I don't know. I mean, he was, it was halfway down the driveway. Uh, Your Honor, if I could uh, share my screen, do I have the ability to do that? I think Ms. Trinidad has to let you do it. Is this the photo M6 that you took? One of them. Okay. And this is the photo that you attorney sent around everyone saying this is Mr. Garner, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, have you... Um, altered this photo in any way i when i was taking the picture i zoomed in to try to get a picture of what i could okay um and were you in your car at this time no i was out of my car okay um and you believe this accurately depicts the scene on december 22nd correct yes your honor i'd offer m6 and evidence any objection no objection Okay. M6 is admitted, but Miss Wright, I, where's the person? I, I it's mean, really, it's hard to see on. I think on. it's, I think it's this thing here. Okay. Okay. It's okay. probably easier. I, I didn't get the pictures by email. So if, if somebody could, you know, I didn't get the exhibits either. If somebody could email me the, the picture. I would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, and then I've got a little better one, Judge. So I'm going to show you, Brooklyn, what's M6. Um, and did you also take this photo? Let me see if I can zoom in. Oop, sorry, wrong way. That was M6. M M7, was I apologize, okay. Judge. Okay. So it's, here, uh, do you recognize that photo, Miss Gilmore? Yes. And did you also take that photo? I did. Okay, and were you inside of the car or outside of the car? Outside of the car. Okay. Um, and did you, I mean, so you're on right off for M7. Any objections? No objections. Okay. M7 is admitted. Now, Ms. Gilmore, you were standing, it looks like, maybe on the front side of your car. Is that correct? That's not my car. That's, okay. that's uh, Ms. Groth's car. Okay, and so is this alley is this an alleyway where this person is standing? It's a like a driveway. Okay, and 
you said at some point you were pretty close to him. You were parked next to him, correct? Yes. And you could not take a good, clear photo for us to see. It happened very quickly. Objection, non-responsive. Could you have taken a just a snap, clear photo? You were right there, one car distance away. I had no time. I got, I drove up, put my car in park, and he was already walking out. Okay. And Miss Gilmore, you are asking the court here to remove these children from Miss Groth's home. Is that correct? Yes. And you understand that that would disrupt the children's lives, correct? Yes. Okay. And so you understand that this is a pretty important hearing today and this is a big decision and we need to be sure. Is, do you understand that? Yes. And this is the best evidence that we have that Mr. Garner was there, as you say, is that correct? This, I guess physically for y'all. Yes. Okay. Um, now I'm going to show you now another exhibit. If I can get that open. Uh, um, now, Miss Gilmore, um, after you allegedly saw Mr. Garner at Miss Groth's home, you sent Miss um, Groth a text message saying, look, you need to provide me the neighbor's information. And you got, you know, an hour to do that. Is that correct? I had asked her, I said, what was the, the male's name? Um, and then I didn't get a response for about an hour. And so that's when I said that she had a little bit more time. Yes. Okay. And so I uh, opened a text message with you and Miss Groth, correct? Yes. And I provided you with Mr. Mickey Cherry's Facebook screenshot. Is that correct? Yes. And is this what I provided you, Mr. Mickey Cherry, here on the screen? I, I don't believe. I believe it was just the picture of his um, profile. Well, did you happen to go flip through his profile? Yes. Okay. And you recognize the man on the screen to be Mr. Cherry, who's depicted in, in whatever Facebook profile was provided. Yes. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to visit with Mr. Cherry? No, I attempted, but I never okay. was able, I never succeeded. Succ succ okay. Do you see any resemblance in the man on the screen and Mr. Garner? Mm, no. You don't see any, they both have dark hair, got some facial beard going on, dark eyes, white males, no resemblance there? No. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I'd offer M8, but I may need a different, I need, may need to use Miss Groth to, um, unless there's an objection, I'll, I'll have to use Miss, if there's an objection, I'd have to use Miss Groth to put that on. No objections. <clears throat> no objection. Okay. Uh, excuse me, inmates admitted. Okay. Now, Ms. Gilmore, you went out. Um, what day did you go out to talk to Ms. Groth about the safety plan? I believe it was Wednesday of last week. Okay. So this was Friday the 22nd. You went out Wednesday would have been the 27th. Let me make sure. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. And you told her that there was, you wanted to put a safety plan in place. I'm assuming after talking to uh, child advocates or your boss or someone, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And Miss Groth agreed to sign the safety plan, correct? And I believe she had already signed it before I called. Is that correct? She was hesitant, but she but did she eventually because she couldn't get a hold of you. Well, right. until the very end. Right. But she'd already signed it when I called, correct? Right. And all is what I told you is that I just wanted it noted on the safety plan that she did not agree that Mr. Garner was there. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't like she was saying, oh, I can't agree that Mr. Garner, um, that I'm not going to keep him away as she's done. Is that correct? She said he wasn't there. So I, I want the, the wording changed. What 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 are you saying that she said when y'all when you were trying to get her to sign the safety plan? She told me that she couldn't sign it because it was not accurate. Okay, but then she did sign it, right? Eventually. Then that was without my 
counsel or anything. She eventually signed it. And then when I called you, um, I told you I just wanted it noted, correct? Right. And you told me there, you know, there's an alternative to this, right? Meaning we can file a removal, correct? It That was prior to her. I was saying that there was an alternative if she didn't sign it or there could be an alternative. Right. But she'd already signed it by the time you and I visited, correct? Yeah. Like right before. Yes. Right. Um, and so if you had her, what was the purpose of doing the safety plan if you were going to file the removal anyways? There, there wasn't a plan to. So what made you file the removal? Because she was, she was not wanting to, y'all, y'all did not agree to the safety plan. But she signed the safety plan, correct? Right. But you said you that y'all didn't agree to the safety plan if no, no, it didn't no, have no, that, no. that stated. All I said was I wanted it noted that she did not agree that he was there. Correct. That's what you stated. If she would, if you told me that if you, if I did not, that y'all didn't agree to it because of the wording and you wanted it to have the right wording in order for her to agree to it. She had already signed it though, Miss Gilmore, correct? Yes. And I told you that on the phone. I said, well, she's already signed it. What am I going to do at this point? Correct? Yes. So what is the reason that you filed for the disrupted monitored return? Ultimately, decisions like that aren't my decision. So you can't tell us today why you you couldn't proceed with the safety plan and you had to go forward with the disrupted return. You can't give me an answer to that. I don't have the ability to make decisions like that. So is that a no, you cannot answer that question? That's a no, I can't answer that question. Okay. Is there anyone here to testify that can answer that question? Ms. Gilmore, did you hear Ms. Rice's last question? I thought it was a question for other people. No, no. Go say that. Say it one more time. Is there anyone here from your agency that can testify as to why the safety plan wasn't sufficient? Uh, Ms. Mouton, my, my supervisor. Okay. Uh, excuse me. And so your testimony is your plan was to go, y'all's plan collectively, your agency was to go forward with the safety plan until I spoke up, basically. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, it was, that was part of it, yes. So had Ms. Groff just not had an attorney um, and not had someone advocating on her behalf, you would have just gone forward with the safety plan. None of us would be here today. I wouldn't say that. Wait, wait, Ms. Wright, hold on. Mr. Garner, are you vaping or smoking or anything? If you are, don't do that in court. <clears throat> you are in a courtroom. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you ask that question again, Ms. Wright? Um, yes, if I can remember what. <laughs> sorry. Um, so at some point, Ms. Gilmore, you and your agency thought the safety plan was sufficient, correct? For the time being, yes. But you don't know what changed. That's what your testimony is. You don't know what changed that made the safety plan become insufficient and you have to file um, to disrupt the monitored return. Because she was very, she didn't want to sign the safety plan. But she did, correct? Yes. And when you and I talked, you said, well, you know, there's an alternative if she doesn't sign it. But she had already signed it, correct? I'm going right. to ask an answer, Judge. Same. And so... <clears throat> Let me just run through my notes here. And so you, you did not talk to Mr. Mickey Cherry, correct? No, I attempted. Mikey, whatever his name is. Did you talk to any neighbors? No, I, I wasn't going to do that by myself. Okay. Did you talk to Mr. Garner? He doesn't ever answer me. Okay. Did you go talk to his employer? I did not have the... I, I w was going to, however, I didn't. 
at the time. And why didn't you? Well, the holidays were happening and I didn't get my way. I didn't get up there fast enough. Okay. And to your knowledge, where is he employed? Burger King in Marble Falls. And when is the last time you verified his employment to Burger King? I was told a few weeks ago. Okay. Um, but he's been there for a little bit. Okay. Have you ever gone to Burger King to chat with him? I've attempted a couple of times, I believe, two times, three times. And what happens? Uh, the first time he wasn't there, the second time. Um, it's been so long ago. I I don't think any of the times I've seen him besides once when I wasn't working. And you said you've seen him walking down the street. Did you ever try to chat with him any of those times? I tried to, I turned around and I attempted to, um, to catch up to him. However, I lost him. Okay. And did you, I, I don't remember your answer. If you answer, if I asked this, did you try, I know you said you didn't talk to Mr. Cherry, but did you attempt to contact him? I attempted. And how did you do that? I attempted, um, on, uh, social media and I attempted to find his um his uh phone number but I could never find it you're on our past this witness thank you Ms. right anybody else have any questions Ms. Gilmore I will judge. Um, I do have a question, Your Honor. We have a witness who is, um, I believe, an employer uh, with Chris Gardner who needs to get back to work. Is it possible for us to call him out of order, Your Honor? Yes, we can. We'll okay, on. Chris, can you unmute yourself and confirm? Um, I've been trying to confirm that's who it is, Judge. Chris, can you unmute, please? Is it Devin White that we're going to be calling to testify about your employment? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, he's actually my, he's actually my friend that I've been working with. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Is yep. he with you? Yep. And can we get him sworn in? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm hiring right now. I'll go back to the, to the job site. Can you just give me one minute? Um, okay. Uh, Devin White. Yeah. My boss. You going to testify for me though? Yeah, I got you. Devin, How's um, judge, we can we swear Mr. White in, please, Judge? Yes. Uh, Mr. White, raise your right hand, please. Can, and can you pull over? We're not supposed to drive and be in court at the same time. Yeah, I, right now here, I'm at a stoplight, so hold on. Okay. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you have to take your hat off, too. Because you are in a courtroom. No, it doesn't look like it, but you are. In and Devin, um, do you know who Christopher Garner is? Uh, yeah, he was my neighbor for a while. Okay, where were where were you living when he was your neighbor? Ten. Is that in Kingsland, Texas, or Granite Shoals? Granite Shoals. Okay, and um, are you? Uh, do you stay in frequent contact with um, Chris? Every day. Okay. And do you know where he was on December 22nd? It would be a Friday about, I guess, a week and a half ago. At what time? Um, about five o'clock in the evening. Oh, we were probably driving back back from work. Where do you work? Uh, I work in uh, Marble Falls. I do just like a handyman work, construction, on my own contract. Okay. And so he was with you driving back from work? Yes, Yes, ma'am. Okay. Probably... Say it again. The, yeah, if my yeah, yes, ma'am. There's probably a few of us. My bad. Okay, no problem. All right, I um, pass the witness. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, Mr. White? I'm just uh, one or two, Judge. Um, Mr. White, my name is Sonia Wright, and I represent Ms. Groth in this case. Um, on that Friday afternoon, December twenty, <laughs> where would y'all have been around three p.m.? Uh, probably in Horseshoe Bay working. Okay. Um, and then you said, were y'all there from three to five or to just kind of we're give there, me a we're, we're there from like eight to four thirty. Okay. 
And it's a good it's a good distance away from Granite Shoals, about forty five minutes. And so you said at five, y'all would have been driving back to uh, Granite Shoals. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, how long has Mr. Garner worked with you? Uh, maybe right, right, maybe three months. And y'all do hand new man work, so it's kind of here and there. Is that yeah, correct? I do, I, I do it on the side, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, no further questions, Judge. Anybody else? No, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. White, how long had Mr. Garner worked for you that on that day? Like how many hours did y'all work? Uh, how many hours did we work? We worked from like eight to four thirty, but um, I, I would say two and a half, three months. Okay. I'm pulled uh, over on the side. I'm, I'm on the side of the road right now, so I can't really check my. Do you have rec uh, like records of when y'all work? Uh. I I don't I don't I give them cash because I I mean that's what I get, I just cash my check I don't have but like two people. Okay, um, where do, where do you take, pick him up and take him at the end of the day, or does he do you drive him around? No, I just drop him off in Marble Falls. Okay, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, yeah. Okay, does he not live next door to you anymore? No, ma'am. Okay. So you would have dropped him off about four thirty on that Friday. Yes, ma'am. I would have got to Granite Shoals at about five o'clock myself. Okay. Do you know if Mister? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mister Garner still works at Burger King. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. You should. I mean, I I ate a burger about two days ago from. Okay, remember, 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 take your hat off. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so y'all handy, you, you have another job other than handyman? Uh, I do granite work, like granite countertops and stuff. Okay. Does Mr. Garner get paid? Do you just pay him that day for the work he's done that day? Yeah, about, yeah, just like 12, 13 bucks an hour. Okay, okay thank you. Anybody else have any questions for Mr. White? Okay, Mr. White, you're excused, but Mr. Garner has to stay here, okay? Okay. Uh, Miss Lang, next witness. Yes, Your Honor. I'll recall uh, Miss Gilmore at this time. Okay, thank you. So, Brooklyn, let's just go over a couple of things. Um, whenever you tried to get a hold of this um, Mickey Cherry um, you said you use social media. Did you call Serena and ask her for a phone number to reach him? I didn't. Okay. And Did you hear uh, that question. Do you need me to repeat it, Judge? Yeah, I heard the last I heard was uh, mm -hmm. I just Chris, would you mind muting your phone your yourself, Chris? Judge, I asked the question if um Ms. Gilmore uh, contacted Serena to try to get the phone number to Mickey Cherry when she was trying to reach him. Okay. And her response was, I think, no. Is that right, Brooklyn? I just said I didn't. Okay. And um, so whenever the person exited the car that you took the photograph off, were they running, like trying to get away from you? They were just quickly walking. Okay. And you mentioned uh, you were asked if you'd seen Chris before and you had said yes, that you'd been um, visited the home in the past and he had been there. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Not the home. It was on the same road. Well, I mean, in that area, close to his home, right? Yes. So, can you ask the question again? I'm sorry. Sure. Not a problem. Um, you had described that you had seen Chris in the area of Serena's home in the past. Can you tell us about that? Yes, um, I have. I had done my my visit with the kids and her and I left and um, I saw him. Um, I'm directionally challenged. Um, go he on the road right before you like he was coming up on the road and then turning to her like the road that she lives on. And how so how long I, was that? Go ahead. 
sorry. Go ahead. When was that? That was, um, I believe, two weeks prior to the 22nd. Okay. Was he walking or driving? Walking. And did you, you didn't get out and take a photograph of him then? No, I was, in, I was driving in my vehicle. And so I was trying to turn around to catch up to him. However, I lost him. Was he running? No, he was, he was walking. Okay. And so, but you weren't, he was in the area of her home and you weren't concerned about the, the situation at that time for the safety and well-being of the children? Yes, I was. I, I had made a, quite a few loops to see where he had went. But you didn't talk to her, Serena or her lawyer about a safety plan then, is that correct? Not at that very, not at that time. Okay. I was going to talk to her about the, uh, what I had seen that following time I saw. Okay. And, um, when you thought you saw Chris that time, about two weeks prior, did you call him and to see if that was him? I have, I, I had contact, try attempted to contact him and for a visit, but that's it. But in that moment, when you're concerned that was him to verify if it was him or not, you did not try to call Chris's phone number. Is that right? No, it was. And what, was what late. number do you have for Chris Garner in your, in your database? Too. Okay. And, um, and just so you know, that's the same number I talked to him on all the time. He's been texting me all morning on that number. So it is his number. So at that time, two weeks ago, did you send him a text and say, Chris, I'm concerned. I believe I saw you in the area of Serena's home. You know, you're not allowed to be there. Did you send him that text message? No, I've texted him to ask him for a visit. Okay. But you weren't concerned enough about the safety and well-being of the children to give him notice that you're concerned about him being over there two weeks prior to this. You didn't do anything to notify him of your concern. He wasn't at the residence. So I had no, <clears throat> I, I wasn't, I, I was not able to confirm that he was there at the residence. Okay. And then on this event that happened on December 22nd, um, you said you didn't call him because he didn't return your calls. Is what Was that the way you responded in the past? Like you didn't bother calling him because he never picked up the calls when you called him anyway? I, I just was more worried about talking to my boss and all the parties and making sure everything was all right. Because you think you'd already made up your mind. It was Chris, no matter what. You didn't need to confirm anything. You you know in your mind that that's it. You didn't need to do anything else, even after Serena told you that it wasn't him. Objection. Argumentative. So why, why didn't you feel like you needed to call him? Say that last part. So tell us um, why you didn't feel like you needed to call Chris to see if it was him for sure. I mean, there was no reason to. Did you believe Serena? There's no way in the world Selena, there was any truth to what Serena told you is what your assumption was. Is that correct? I was that confident. Okay. <clears throat> so when you visited with the children, what were the visible injuries or signs of neglect that you saw on them that day? There were no injuries. What was the visible sign to you that they were being neglected? They had really, they had extremely unkept hair. Their feet were extremely dirty. Um, clothes were really dirty. The house was really dirty. But you waited five days to go back and talk to Serena about with the safety plan. So you weren't really that concerned about what you saw with regards to how dirty or unkept the children were. Is that correct? I I wouldn't say no. Okay. And when you opened the refrigerator, what was the situation for food and um, water and things of that nature for the children? She always has food in there. Okay. Um, how long has the monitored return been in place? I believe since August 3rd. Is it fair to say approximately four to five months? That sounds about right. Okay. And um, how many times have you been into the home since this monitored return began? Almost weekly. 
Okay. And when you visited with the children, what were the things they told you that indicated they were afraid in that home? I've never stated that the kids talked about being afraid. Okay. Did What were the things that indicated the children were agitated, concerned, hypervigilant, anything that shows that they were emotionally or mentally unsta- unsafe or unsteady? Um, they're about the same every single time. Okay. Were, what were the signs you saw that showed that they weren't sleeping well or able to have normal routines in their life? I, I have been told that they, you know, they haven't had any issues sleeping. Okay. You testified earlier um, that the reason why you're wanting to disrupt this monitored return is because Serena, you believe Serena has allowed him to come around the children and he's a danger to the children. Tell us exactly what that danger is that he has done over the past five months that they've been in her care. Give us the examples of what you base that opinion on. He hasn't been involved in the case at all. Okay. So there's really been nothing, no ill effect from Serena managing their care from what your testimony has been. Is that, would you agree today you didn't offer anything that was a concern about abuse or neglect to the children? I, I, I missed the question, I guess. So is there any reason that you would say Serena has done anything? And Because the children have been in her care solely. Has she done anything that concerns you about her ability to take care of these children on a day-to-day basis? Very minimal things. Okay. And tell us about her drug testing. Um, when's the last, how many months has she been sober? Um, she's had positive hair follicles. I don't think she's ever had a negative one, but in regards of UAs, since I've been in the case. Which you said it was about eight or nine months, right? I believe since May, April, May. Okay. So your um, her attorney visited with you about the sequence of events about your visit your um, lack of urgency to get back in to provide that safety plan five days later, and then all of a sudden to have this disruptive monitor return. Um, basically, if it was up to you, this wouldn't have happened this way, right? There's no reason for these children to be moved out of the care of their mother, but you, the, the, your department, people above you, you didn't make that decision, right, Brooklyn? That's what you testified to earlier. I wouldn't say that exactly, but it's ultimately not my decision when it comes to big decisions like that. Yeah. And in fact, you know, there was really not a huge level of urgency and concern all through the holidays to worry that Chris was where really there. Your testimony earlier was you didn't even go up to Burger King to try to talk to him or confirm whether or not he was working to get more information about what Serena gave you. That didn't happen, correct? It would have if it wasn't a hot, like it it was, it was pretty late that day. Yeah. But you know, if it was something that you were truly concerned about the well-being of these children, it would have happened that day, right, Brooklyn? It it would depend. I I felt, I felt. Thanks. Yeah. Are you done, Miss Lang? I have a few follow-up questions, Judge. Okay, Miss Vanna. Miss <laughs> Brooklyn, um, as you testified earlier, there's already been a court order in place that states that Mr. Gardner is not to be around the children or Serena's residence, stuff like that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so the safety plan was just memorializing a court order. Is that right? Yes. And um, did you did you believe that Miss Groth was violating the court order? Yes. Um, and so did the safety plan really add anything to <clears throat> the situation? No. Okay. Um, did you believe that the safety plan would be appropriate long term due to your belief that she was violating the court order? Yes. Okay. Um, and so you said you believe that, excuse me, 
the safety plan that she would follow the safety plan? Yes. Okay. Do you think it was an appropriate thing for long term? Yes, it was already in place. Okay. I don't think you're understanding my question. I guess I don't think so. I think I missed part of it. Okay. So um, do you believe that a safety plan is the appropriate measure for long term in this case? No. Okay. Um, and so um, because in fact, there's already been a court order in place for quite some time. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And so you've also been asked whether you attempted to reach out to Mr. Gardner, correct? Yes. Okay. Would your conversations with him have changed your mind about what, about what you saw that day? No. Okay. Um, okay. No further questions. Anybody else? I have just a couple, Judge. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gilmore, going back to the drug testing, I just want to be clear. Um, what had Miss this, the drug in this case for Miss Groth was marijuana, correct? Right. I believe in the very beginning there was methamphetamines as well, but other, but there wasn't anything past that one. Right. So when we say she's been sober, it's not like she's having to kick meth and we've had a, an issue with that, correct? Right. <laughs> um, so I want to understand this correctly. When you and your boss staff this case, I'm assuming that Miss Mouton asks you what your input is for how to proceed. Is that correct? Um, I always just kind of express what has happened and she tells me what to do from there. Okay. So y'all don't have a conversation like where you would say, well, this is what I think is appropriate. Is that correct? I mean, I can, no, anything in regards of what I say, I believe, you know, goes into effect, not effect, but it does, doesn't make any decisions based off of okay. what I say. So when you talk to Miss Mouton on the day, the 22nd, um, and then five days later, when did y'all decide between the 22nd and the 27th that y'all needed to put a safety plan in effect? I believe it was, we were discussing it a little bit um, right before the holidays. And then right when the holidays occurred, that's when, I mean, when the, the holidays ended, I'm sorry. Okay. So after the, after Christmas, let everybody do Christmas, get done with Christmas then we come back to the emergency. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So y'all, you staffed with Miss Mouton. Y'all decided to go out and do, do a safety plan. Y'all did that, correct? <clears throat> yes. Now, when from the time you, Miss Groth signed the safety plan on the 27th to the filing of this disrupted motion for disrupted monitored return, when did y'all decide to go ahead with the motion? I believe it was either the same day or like early the next morning. And when you went there on the 27th to get the safety plan signed, was your original intention to get the safety plan signed and be done with it? That was just not really be done with it. No, but that was what I was ordered to do next. But you didn't have a plan when you got there on the 27th to file to disrupt the return. Is that correct? I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. I I feel like that was just discussion being occurring without me being involved. So why didn't you just file the disrupted return? I don't have the ability to do that. What, can't you get on the phone and call your attorney and tell her to do that? I can't make big decisions like that just by myself. Okay. Um, so what was the purpose of the safety plan? To re reiterate what was the court order. But that was already in the court order, correct? Right. So was there a reason for the safety plan? To I, I get, remind her of the importance that Christopher Garner didn't need to be around her, the children. 
Okay. But when you got there on the 27th, I want just I want this to be very clear. Did you have a plan? Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> I think Mr. Garner just shot the bird at the camera. When you got there on the 27th. Anybody else I, see that? I saw that. I wasn't judge. looking at him, Judge. I apologize. Garner. Mr. Garner. Miss <laughs> Lang, tell your client. I mean, I've been cutting him some slack by moving around. It's really annoying. Mr. Garner, if you just shot. Um, the bird, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me or what? Can you hear me or what? I can hear you. You need to well, hear thank me. God. Well, thank God, because you, you need to hear me now, because um, I'm not in Marble I Falls right now. And I did not, you, Chris, I did not you need to see yourself. I waved at a car driving by me. Thank Chris, you very much. When you got there <clears throat> on the 27th. Yeah, you need to just mute yourself and sit still if you can. Do. He's gone. I'm not going to listen to that. He's not going to talk to me like that. I'm sorry, Miss Lane, but nah, I'm not gonna have any of that. I understand, and Judge. Thank you. With, it was like this, and you don't wave with a finger, and it was all well. Maybe he does, but he's in court. We don't do that, and it was perfectly legitimate. I mean, he, Miss Gilmore, didn't like that. He didn't like the answer Miss Gilmore gave him. So of course he's gonna make some sort of snarky move. So no, sorry, Miss Wright. Go back a little bit because I was. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't even I wasn't looking at him, so I didn't see any of it. Uh, Miss Gilmore, I just want to be very clear. I, I don't know that we have a clear answer to this. So when you went on the 27th to sign to present the safety plan, um, did you already have a plan to do the the removal, uh, the the motion to disrupt the return? I think it was a discussion, but it was a discussion between my boss and uh, program director, not me in the discussion and did that discussion happen after the 27th after, after she signed the safety plan 22nd it had been a discussion and then i was given next steps but it was still i i believe a continued discussion just not with me involved because earlier you testified that y'all didn't y'all didn't you proceeded with the the disrupted return because miss Groth was hesitant to sign the safety plan. I believe that was part of it. Okay. So you don't have, you don't know, is that fair to say when it was decided to file the return to disrupt the it return? Was, it was decided after my, uh, my visit with them on the 22nd. So, I mean, I'm sorry, the 27th. Okay. So after she signed the safety plan. Yes. Okay. Um, and what was your input to that meeting? What was your recommendation for your bosses? I had explained that she didn't want to, at first, she didn't want to sign it. And so that's when I gave her the opportunity to try to call you or whatever. And I stepped out um, and called my boss and we, I told her what was going on. And then I, I went back in and um that's when i had talked to you and you understand she didn't miss gross hesitance in signing it was because she didn't agree that mr garner was there correct right but the explanation on there was what i had saw what i, I understand that that was my based question. off of i understand that but my question was just you understand that miss gross hesitation it wasn't because she didn't agree that mr garner shouldn't be around it was she didn't agree that he that you saw him there Yes. Okay. Um, because that's been a court order, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and you testified earlier that the kids were kind of dirty or the house was dirty, but you didn't put any of that in your motion, correct? I had, I had sent what was, uh, what I had uh, um, observed to our attorney, but that was it. But that's not in the motion, correct? I assume not. Okay. Have you read the motion? I haven't. Okay. So the reason we're here is solely Mr. Garner, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, pass the witness, Judge. Anybody else? Any questions, Ms. Gilmore? No, Your Honor. Ms. Gilmore, when did uh, Ms. Groff submit to the hearing? You, you cut out at the very end. <clears throat> when did she 
when did Miss Gilmore submit you the hair strand test? She, um, I was there on that Wednesday, I believe, and I had her do it the next by the next day at one. Okay, so about one. one. Uh, about yes. Okay. Um, have you looked at your computer today to see if the results were back? Yes, I did right before court, and um, I had they haven't come back yet. Okay. But it was also uh, pretty early. It doesn't really come that early most of the time. Have you, know, you said you've been to Miss Wells' home throughout this monitor return, mostly weekly, correct? Mostly, sometimes every other week, um, but mostly weekly. Have you seen the children in the <clears throat> way they were in the past, or was this a new dirty and all that? Was that a new thing? I feel like it was it was a new newer thing like they're often have you know um unke some sort of unkept hair you know but they also come from school and so i kind of think you know um but it seemed more this time okay what about the house more more okay yes um <clears throat> well it could be because they're home on vacation that and Christmas and just kind right. of four kids in the house is kind of a, we know we've always been concerned about that. And that's kind of a lot also. Right. Right. Uh, is Miss Groth working? No, she hasn't worked in some time. How does she support the children? I am. I'm not sure. I have, a, I've attempted to ask if she's, she says that she's just able to, you know, buy what they need to buy. I'm not sure where the income's coming from. Um, on the Friday, the 22nd, did she know you were coming or was it a surprise visit? I always do surprise visits. Okay. Was Miss Groth just immediately, that's not Mr. Garner? I mean, just, or did she go, you know, go like, oh, darn, I got caught? Or how, how was she in that regard? She was saying that wasn't him. It was it, that it was her neighbor working on the car, but he was just blank like the seat was a little bit back so he was just laying in the car dry in the passenger side or the driver's side the driver's side okay do you know where mr garner lives i have no i, I have no idea i know that um just miss groth always has stated that she see, sees him often um in granite shoals and that um that's all I know. I don't know where he's residing at. Okay, that's all my questions. Anybody else have anything? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Lane, did you call Ms. Gilmore this time? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Next witness. I, I don't have anybody else, Judge. He's gone. <laughs> okay. Well, he's in the waiting room. Is that Mr. Trotter, Judge, in the waiting room still? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I think he's going to be just like a very quick, short. Okay. And actually, Mr. Garner is gone now. He kept trying to pop in a couple of times. Uh, Ms. Ms. Wright, you want Ms. Trotter? Yes, Ms. Judge. Okay. Trotter, my name is Sonia Wright. I represent Ms. Groth in this case. Um, I'm going to keep this short. Uh, Mr. Trotter, how far do you live from Ms. Groth's residence? Uh, I'm going to say probably 150 to 200 feet. Okay. So you can... Can you see her house from your house? Yes, I have a front door that slides slides open. And I also have a back door where my room is at that I go out with my dogs and work in my yard at. So I do see her. I see the kids outside playing regularly and I see her. Okay, thank you. And prior to, um, so December of 2022, uh, prior to that, did you work with Mr. Garner somewhere? I actually, I, I think it was in 21 maybe. Okay. Maybe back in 20, I don't, I'm not sure exactly when it was. It was over a year ago, at least. So you're familiar while. with what he looks like? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm not really a fan of Chris, so I really can't say a whole lot about Chris. Uh, but yeah, he did work for me at one point. Okay. And have you, so since in the last year, we'll say that, have you seen Mr. Garner at Miss Groth's home? No, ma'am. Okay. You haven't seen him squirreling around the driveway or anything like that? No, ma'am. Okay. 
Um, do you ha see any, when you see the children, do you have any concerns that they're being neglected or not cared for or anything like that? Uh, no, actually I hear them playing outside, uh, having a good time. Uh, you know, I'd, like I said, I work out in my yard and I have my dogs are in the yard there. So I do hear the kids playing and having a good time. I've never seen anything okay. in my knowledge that I would be concerned about. And did anyone from the, uh, child protective services contact you? after December 22nd to see if you had seen anything or if you had seen Mr. Garner or anything like that? No, not from CPS. No, they haven't. Okay. Um, I and, guess that's who it is, right? CPS? Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, on December 22nd, between the hours of 3 and 5 p.m., were you home? Uh, you know, I, I was at work until I'm going to say about 3.30 or 4. So okay. if I was at home, I didn't see anybody around there that day. So I but can't. I can't. Yes, sir. I can't when testify got, to that case. I understand. When you got home around 3 30 or 4, just to be clear, you didn't see Mr. Garner at Miss no. Garner's house. Okay. No, okay. ma'am. I have not seen Mr. Chris Garner there. Uh Thank it's you. been quite a while since I've seen Chris, to tell you the truth. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Anybody have any questions, to Mr. Trotter? Yes, sir. No, ma'am. No, okay, ma hold on. One of the other lawyers wants to ask you something, Mr. Trotter. Hold on. Ms. Okay. Vanna. Mr. Trotter, is it fair that mm -hmm. uh, to say that you're not always looking out your window at Ms. Groth's home? Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so it, um, is it possible that on the 22nd, when you weren't looking, that Mr. Gardner would have been somewhere in the front yard or in a car uh, by her residence? Is it possible? I don't think that would be fair for me to say when I went, when I didn't see that. Okay. Um, but I mean, you, weren't, I you weren't looking the entire time you from the time you got home from work um, until 5 or 6 p.m. out your front window, were you? Uh, not the whole time, no, ma'am. No further questions. Anybody else? No, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Trotter, can you promise me if you see Mr. Garner there, you will contact maybe the Vernon County Attorney's Office or CPS and let us know? Most definitely, yes. I want the best. Thanks for the girls as well. So, most definitely. Okay, thank you. Okay, <laughs> anybody have anything else? Hold on. Anybody, anybody have anything else, Mr. Garner? Uh, sorry, Mr. Trotter. No, Your Honor. Okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Anybody else have any witnesses? I'd like to call Miss Groth, Judge. Okay. Nobody in the waiting room. Okay. Miss Groth's here. Miss Groth, unmute yourself, please. Right, there we go. Miss um, Groth, we're, I'm just going to cut to it so we can get done. Um, this incident occurred on December, tw this alleged incident, December 22nd, correct? Yes. And you recall sending me a text message about Brooklyn sitting outside of your house for 30 minutes. Is that correct? Yes. And that was around, you text me at 3.53 p.m. Is that correct? Yes. So this incident probably occurred around 3.20. Would that be correct? Around that time, yes. So not 5 p.m., correct? Yes. Um. So can you just tell us what happened? You saw Miss Brooklyn sitting outside your home. What happened next? Should I start from like the beginning of the day or when... Uh, Brooklyn was in the driveway. Just the beginning of the day. It's fine. Okay. So um, we had normal breakfast, normal morning. Um, the kids went down for a nap. I'd had an issue where my car wouldn't start the day before. So I bought a battery and I was trying to replace the battery while the kids were taking a nap. I had the hood up on the car and um, Mikey from across the street came over and asked me if I needed some help. He didn't actually help me at this time. He went back for his tools and he did come back and forth. Um, he lives uh, across the street on the other side of where uh, Mr. Trotter's house is. Um, there's a curved road um, and he's like across the field from it. And he, um, his grandmother's house is next to him. I, uh, um, he got tools and he came over back and forth a few times to help me. Um, and um, at this point, the kids had woken up. So I told him that he could um, do what he felt necessary because we replaced the battery and we were making sure that it wasn't the alternator that was the issue um, with the car. Um, and so he wanted to take it around the block and then wait a few minutes and then start it again to make sure that it didn't die in between um, that time. So I was inside for the next little while, to, like with the kids um, and he was uh, working on the car and I was not really concerned about what was happening out there. I trusted him and I've known his grandmother a long time. Um, uh, Brooklyn came um, around 3.30. Um, I'm, they were outside together for about 10 minutes and I came to the gate and gave her a thumbs up and motioned her to come inside because I thought she was waiting for me or something. I was initially concerned that she thought I was in a relationship with him 
And I just wanted to talk to her to make sure that everything was cleared up about, um, about, you know, the whole situation that he was just offering help. Um, she, uh, nodded at me but did not answer my phone calls or anything and sat outside talking to her boss I guess for about 30 minutes and then left for probably another 30 minutes um I talked to to uh, to my lawyer uh during that time and um she came back with Miss Susan Potts probably around five o'clock and um then uh we went inside and she immediately said that uh that Chris was here and i was and I was completely blindsided by that because I thought we would be talking about whether I was in a relationship or not um, with uh, this guy uh, with Mikey, which I was not romantically involved with him. He just offered help as like a one-time thing, and I haven't seen him since that day. Um, uh, All right, and you've tried. So I showed her pictures. Go ahead. Yeah, so I showed her pictures of Chris and looked up his Facebook to show the difference between the two men. And um, she continued to say that it was, uh, that that was Chris and that she was sure, but she'd never met him and she was sure that that's what he looked like. And um, I was not aware about any, about her seeing someone around the neighborhood, but Mikey does live across the street. So it would be normal for him to be in the same neighborhood. Now, um, you, also uh the I'm going to stop you there. You, uh, since this, you've tried to contact Mr. Mikey. Is that correct? Mr. Cherry? Yes. And he's kind of avoiding you. Is that correct? Yeah. I've left notes on the door and, um, tried to talk to him. Uh, he said that he didn't want anything to do with uh, CBS. Okay. And he has children, correct? Yes. And a wife. Um, and a wife. So he just doesn't want anything to do with this case. Um, do you, and so just for the record, Ms. Groth, was Mr. Garner at your home on December 22nd? No. And has he been at your home any time, you know, after he wasn't supposed to, I guess would be back in this last December? It's been more than a year since he's been at my home. Okay. And you realize how important it is to keep him away and to follow the court's order, correct? Yes, I completely agree with it. And you, um, you understand, uh, let me back up. You um, so have your kids been on break now for from school and things like that? Yes, yeah, since December twenty second. Okay. And are things a little hectic at your home? Um, sometimes uh, they had um teased their hair that morning. It did look a little bit more uh messed up. They uh we got a hair clips that had uh colored hair extensions, and they just were doing their own hair and playing. And we were playing out in the yard later that day. Um and you do get dirty when you're having fun. Sure. The house was as clean as normal. Um, it's always clean. Um, the one time that Brooklyn came for the safety plan, I was actually taking down my Christmas tree at that time. So I was sweeping up the debris under the tree. But um, other than that, it was as just as clean as it usually is. Okay. Um, and like you said, kids get dirty, correct? I mean, they're playing outside, playing with Christmas toys, things like that. Yes. Okay. Um, and how do you feel that the kids are, do you feel that they're settled and well settled and well adjusted in your home since the return began? Yes. They're very happy and they're doing really, really great. And it's been really great to, to be a family again and have everything going back to normal. Okay. And anytime Ms. Gilmore has made a complaint in this case, for example, with the doctor's visits, um, we had the doctor testify, everything was fine. The school absences, you got that cleared up. Is that correct? You fixed all these little complaints that she's had along the way. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, do you feel like the children are any in any danger or anything like that? No. Okay. And if Mr. Garner were to come to your house, what would you do? I would probably first tell him to leave or call the cops if he didn't immediately leave, let you guys know of the incident. And do you feel that you've been completely transparent and honest in this case? Yes. And you just, for the record, you've done everything on your service plan, correct? Yes. Is your individual counseling ongoing or has, have you been successfully discharged? Successfully discharged. So the only thing left on your plan is the drug testing that you've, you're doing, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, now, as far as money, you, you graduated from college at some point during this case. Is that correct? Yes. And you've been trying to get a job as a CPA. Is that correct? 
I've I've been door dashing recently. That's how I've been um, yeah. receiving income. Um, I need to work under another CPA for a year before I get my CPA license. Ford is actually starting daycare whenever this break ends, January 8th. So all of the kids will be in Head Start or school. And I have a job opportunity lined up uh, with H&R Block um, for tax season. Great. Okay. Yeah. But, you, but you've been door dashing, correct? A grub hub, whatever, one of those. DoorDash. Okay. And you've, I believe I've seen that in a court report somewhere. So you've, have you talked to Ms. Gilmore about the door dashing? Yes. Okay. Every time someone talks about income, I tell them that I've been door dashing. And are you able to meet yours and the children's needs via the money you make from DoorDash? Yes. I have not used all of my savings that I began this case with. Um, the maternity leave that I was planning I still have savings and I have been door dashing. I've done a little less of it lately since I know that he'll be in daycare soon and I'll be able to, to, you know, work a little more. Up from um, have you, do you feel like um, you've done everything to keep these kids safe? Yes. I, I, I was hoping that by just following all the rules and being a good mom that you guys would all understand that I was doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. And I, I thought this would be, over by now and it's really been a shock to have it's been a very scary couple of days waiting for this um did not expect to have it this happen okay um and as far as the tell me about the former placement who who was the former placement my aunt lisa okay and do you still use lisa for help yes yeah, she comes over often and um, she just came over and brought Christmas presents. We forgot to give her ours because we were busy, but we will be doing that soon. Um, she comes once or twice a week and sometimes takes the kids to her house for the weekend. She misses them a lot. And it is, uh, we spent the holidays with her. Uh, the thanks, We spent Thanksgiving with her. Okay. And anytime I need anything, she's, she's available. She has been working a lot. She said she couldn't take off today. Uh, my grandma's here watching the girl okay. while we do That's this. Okay. So would you say that Lisa is a pretty good support system for you and your children? Yes. Okay. Um, and tell me her relation to you. She's my mother's sister. Okay. Your aunt. Um, she was also my foster care mother when I was a kid too. Okay. Um, anything else that you think the court needs to know about your case or your situation? Um, but I've been doing my best and the kids are half happy and healthy and clean and um, that there is no danger to them. Okay. And more importantly, that Mr. Garner wasn't at your home, correct? Definitely was not here. Okay. Um, I pass the witness, Judge. Okay. Um, Ms. Groth, um, do you believe that if the children were around Mr. Garner, that he poses a danger to there to them? I do not 100% know if he is drug free or using at the moment. And that would be the biggest factor in that. If he was um, using, definitely, I would not want him around. Um, and the biggest that I see is that, um, uh, is that of course, and uh, there is the court order. So um, those are two big danger things around surrounding that. So you think if he were still using drugs, you believe that he would be a danger to the children if he were around. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, not directly, but that is, there's too much possibility there. So. Okay. And do you have um, a new puppy? Yes. Okay. And when did you get this new puppy? I'm not quite sure. Um, probably about a week or two before Christmas, she was wandering up the road. Um, I'm still trying to find who their owner was. I don't really want to keep her, but um, she's just around. Okay. Um, now, if if your children stated that their dad brought food for the puppy, would that be a truth or a lie? I I cannot. Um, I, I don't have an answer to that because... Okay. Well, has Mr. Gardner brought food for the puppy? To your home? No, he, he has not. Okay. So if your children made some sort of statements, would they be telling the truth or a lie? Um, from what I understand, I think that I, I don't know um, for sure, but I, his, the, Jason's grandparents come by sometimes and like 
give peanut butter to the dogs. I think that's what we were talking about there. Um, my lawyer did by t- tell me that there was a statement like that yesterday, but also asked me not to ask the children about it. Um, so I can tell you that Chris or Jason has never come here or bought food for the dogs. And to my knowledge, I'm the only one who feeds my dogs. Okay. Um, if, um, if statements were made that, um, your children's daddy came and helped him climb something, would that be a truth or a lie? I suppose a lie. I don't really want to call my children's liars, but I, I mean, my, I don't think they haven't seen their dads, either of them since, uh, Jason, since this visitation stopped and Chris and since last year. Now, do you have the telephone number for Mr. Mickey Cherry? No, I do not. So if Ms. Brooklyn asked you for that, you wouldn't have that. Is that right? I do not have it, no. Um, if you need his assistance, um, how do you contact him? I messaged him on Facebook. Okay, so through social media. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, now, when you DoorDash, what hours do you typically DoorDash? Um, lunchtime, 1030 to 1. Okay, and where are the children during that time? Um, the big kids would be at school. Ford would be with my sister, and Anastasia is, has Head Start. Okay. And during this Christmas holiday, have you, uh, when the kids are out of school, have you door dashed at all? No. No further questions. Yes, questions. Anybody else have any questions, Rob? I do, Your Honor. Chris Line. I'll get back to you. Um, yeah. Um, Serena. On for those two fathers, Jason and Chris, Jason is the father of the older two children. Is that right? Yes. And Chris is the father. Is there two younger children? Yes. How old are Chris's children? Ford is five months old and Anastasia is 15 months old. So those are little bitty kids. So the older two kids, when they talk about dad, who are they talking about? Are they talking about Jason or are they talking about Chris? Jason, probably. That's all I have to Okay. Anybody else? Just a couple, Judge. Um, Miss Groth, part of the reason that there was a delay for you sending Mr. Cherry's Facebook screenshot to Miss Gilmore, um, was it because you believe he's blocked you at this point? Yeah, his Facebook is up when I search it. So you couldn't find it. I actually had to find it. Is that correct? Yes. So do you have a way to contact Mr. Cherry at this point? No, I don't. Other than going across the street to his grandma's and leaving notes on the door? Yeah, that's the only way. I haven't had any any luck since that day. And I wouldn't really be asking him for assistance. I just accepted it because he offered it. Right. Um, and you did go leave north notes on the door at my request, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, pass the witness, Judge. Anybody else? Your Honor. Ms. Groth, um, the older kids, what do they call Mr. Garner? Chris. They never call him Daddy? No, I don't think so. You don't think so, or do you know for sure? Um, it's been a year since we talked about Chris. Um, I don't think uh, Lila definitely has never called him dad. Um, Amaya might have before, but she mainly calls him Chris as well. Okay, no further questions. Anybody else? No, Your Honor. Um, Miss Roth, Mr. Jason and Edwards been around, right? Um, he lives in Marble Falls. Um, uh, he was a part of the case. Uh, I believe he does some drug tests and he has, uh, he, he had a visitation a few months ago. Um, since they've been on the monitored return, he hasn't uh, had any contact with them. He hasn't been over to your house either? No, he has not. Okay. Um, what are the results going to be of the hair strand test? Negative. Or maybe a tiny bit of, of, of negligible amount like a residual like it was last time if if there is anything uh for of marijuana for marijuana yes who okay i know you have the baby baby's name is ford is that correct yes and remind me again who's the, his his dad mr garner it is uh mr garner he has not signed the birth certificate though so he is not legally um part uh, his father okay. but that is biologically why would you not let Brooklyn talk to the children as she was directing you to stay back? Or why, why were you why were you not cooperative with Brooklyn? I, in that part? 
I did not, I, she did not tell me to stay inside at any point or to stay outside. Um, I followed her out because I thought that was normal that we were going outside then. Um, and she went inside and asked the girls, if you'd asked at any time for privacy, I would have granted that, of course. That's what I always do. Um, there was a time when I was outside with Miss Susan Foss and I said that I needed to go inside and change the diaper. And she said that she might've been talking to her privately. I did not go in the same room as Brooklyn and the children. I merely grabbed a diaper, changed the baby's diaper and came right back outside. I asked Miss Potts if that was all right. And even asked her if she wanted to hold on to Anastasia while I was changing Ford's diaper. I changed the diaper and came right back outside. I did not think it was out of the ordinary or that anyone was going to say that I was, um, that I was impeding your access to the children. Do you think it's fair <clears throat> that you've worked hard and done all the right things in this case and neither of the dads have, but then to let them be around the children? No, I don't think that's fair. I've worked really hard and I, I, I don't know what else, how to do more. I wish I had a way to do more at this point to make, to make it clear um, my intentions. Um, well, you know, say say when CPS gets out of this case, because hopefully eventually they will. <clears throat> and, and you just need, you got four kids. That's a lot. You just need a mental health day. Who would be around? Who would you call on to help with the kids? I have my Aunt Lisa, my sister's book and page. Um, I, and my grandmother, she lives just a block away. She's here watching them right now. Um, those would be my main contacts so people other than the fathers you would reach out to correct yes because you understand if the part if you know if the, one of those dads was caught taking with your children that could end up to be in another removal correct mm -hmm. you yes, I do. That? yes what is what is how would you classify your relationship with mr garner now Ex, um, exes. I wouldn't even say co-parents because I feel like I'm the the only parent in the equation. Um, so just exes. Well, I would really, really hope that, like you said, you busted it. You did a good job. You fought hard in this case. Your lawyer fought hard, fought hard for you. And you know, more than half the time, the dad's never showed up. Correct. He's never met his son, and he hasn't seen Anastasia since she was three months old. Well, if I was you, I would have some kind of angst or I, I would be really mad that they haven't done anything. I'm pretty mad about a lot of things. Yeah. I am. Okay. I'm mad anyway. at him for not even sitting through the court hearing with a good Man. attitude. I said I'm mad at him for not even sitting through this court hearing with a good attitude, and I'm sorry for that. Well, he would have he would have been able to sit here, but you know, I re I removed him. You understand that, right? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and just to be honest with you, if Mr. Garner was at my house looking the way he looked today, is that alarming to you? I didn't really look at his, um, I can't see that on my phone. I, I only see your face and whoever's talking at the time. But um, yeah, he didn't, I mean, he looked, yeah. He looked, he looked messy, if you ask me. Not messy. You know? Methy, you understand that, correct? Yes, ma'am. I don't know if that's a word, but you get my drift, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I would have some serious, serious concerns for anybody, you know, a, a, an aunt, an uncle, a co cousin, a friend, anybody looking the way Mr. Garner looks, being around children. I agree. He will not be around my children anytime soon. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, Ms. Grawl? No. Okay, let's see. Ms. Wright, you called Ms. Groth. Any more witnesses? No, Judge. I don't have any more witnesses. Okay. Ms. Lang, any witnesses? No, Your Honor. Ms. Wheeler, any witnesses? Okay. Uh, well, let me hear from CASA then before I get to hear, hear from the lawyers and Ms. Potts. Ms. Potts, I'll let you. Oh, Ms. Potts, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask you. Do you have any witnesses? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, let me hear from Cost. Ms. Collins. Oh, Ms. Ashfield, what do you think about all this? Yes, uh, Your Honor. 
I think it would be extremely challenging to prove that Chris Garner was the person present. And I have confidence that Serena is telling us the truth. And my observation on my visits and my contacts with Serena, the children, the school, et cetera, I believe that she's taking good care of her children and CASA would be in favor of the case being dismissed. And I would like to defer to my supervisor, Krista Collins, if she would like to add any remarks to what I just said. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ashfield. Uh, Ms. Collins, anything else from CASA? No, I support Joy completely. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Potts, I'm gonna save you for last. Ms. Vanna, I know what you want. Anything else you need to add? Um, no, Your Honor. Um, Judge, I would just ask that um, the court consider all the evidence, including the testimony of um, of everyone. Um, Ms. Brooklyn Gilmore um, states that she saw it was that it was Mr. Gardner in Serena Groth's vehicle um, and not the neighbor. Um, and that if Christopher Gardner is around those children, um, that Miss Groth is putting them in danger um, with the way with his attitude, with the way he looks, with his um with him not complying with the department, refusing to, to drug test, um, that would put the children in danger. Thank you. Ms. Rye. <clears throat> yes, Judge. Um, I think everyone agrees that Mr. Garner is not a good guy and doesn't need to be around the children. Ms. Groth has testified to that. The neighbor testified to that. Everyone agrees on that. The question is, did she have him around the children? And I think the other <laughs> one is that, that was not Mr. Garner. Um, we saw the photo of Mr. Cherry, who mom says that's who it was. And I mean, they are very similar. Um, Miss Brooklyn could have taken, I mean, if that were my job and I was having to prove, I would take a picture of the guy's face and not a picture that looks like a tree or a plant. Um, it's not clear and the evidence is not sufficient to remove these children when all the CASA um, has said they're happy, well adjusted, doing great. Talk to the school doctors, everyone, you know, they're doing good in their mom's home and she's done everything. Miss Groth has been honest and truthful during this whole process. Um, there's just no reason for her to do this at this point or to lie. And um, I think the best evidence of it is, you know, as she testified, when she reached out to me, she thought Miss Gilmore's complaint was going to be that she's romantically involved with Mr. Cherry. Mr. Garner wasn't even on her radar, um, you know, and then she was very blindsided that with the accusation that it was Mr. Garner. Um, his boss testified he was at work away at, from three to five. Uh, the neighbor was getting home around the same time. No one has seen Mr. Garner at the home except Miss Gilmore, who has never met him before today. Um, Your Honor, we are we did file a motion for the case to be dismissed. And the reason for that, just I understand everyone wants orders for the children, but for the baby is not a part of this case. So Miss Groth will have to go through the OAG process regardless. Um, she's he's not she's going to have to do that to get child support conservatorship orders, which she needs to do, um, but she's got to do it anyway. So our request would be leave the monitored return alone. Let us get a court order, um, an agreed order that Ms. Agata had circulated earlier, I think early in December, or dismiss the case and let Ms. Gr Ms. Ms. Groth go through the OAG process for all of the children. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Bright, Ms. Lane. Yes, Your Honor. So my client, although he's not present, is um, adamant that it was not him at the home. He is very uh, respectful of Serena and um, appreciates what she does and does would never want to do anything to impede her ability to be the mom of these kids. In fact, she kicked him out at the beginning of the case when all this started because he'd started using drugs again. And I don't know if y'all remember at the adversary hearing, I'd met with him and he cried because he was he knew he had done wrong and he was taking responsibility for the, the whole issue to begin with. There is a protective parent here. And in the current standards under the department, whenever a case is involved, the children are safe and we have testimony from Miss Brooklyn. There's no harm to these children, mental, physical, or emotional harm at this time. There is a protective parent present. There's no reason to disrupt this monitored return at this point in time. She said these kids were <coughs> over five months taking good care of them. There's been no conclusive evidence presented today that shows that that was indeed Chris Garner at the house violating a court order. There was testimony about the children talking about 
dad coming over, we understand that dad to the children is Jason Edwards. That's not even Chris Garner. There's no urgency here, Your Honor. There's no reason to upset the lives of these children and they're with their mother. This all started, it could have started two weeks ago if Ms. Gilmore was that concerned about Chris being around the family. She did nothing. She didn't try to take a picture. She didn't try to call him. She didn't try to hunt down, justify anything. She didn't know for sure it was him. But today she testified that she believes it was him. We have no proof of that. Then we have the investigation on the 22nd, five days later, a safety plan. And then all of a sudden we need to take these kids home and oh my, take them out of the home and disrupt this monitored return. I agree with uh, Ms. Wright, Your Honor, that Ms. Croth is a mom, a good mom. She's going to take care of these kids. She's got to deal with two pretty bad actor daddies in the lives of these children, but that's up to her. She's educated. She's got a good support system around her. There's no reason for this case to continue, the department to continue. They don't really have a concern about her and the well-being of these children. I think they're more invested in supporting their biases and the assumptions that they've made and spent a lot of time trying to justify what they believe was true versus what the evidence is showing. You know, there's possibilities otherwise, but they didn't go further to decide that because it was the holidays. It was too busy for them to do that. It wasn't that important for the children. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Ms. Wheeler, do you have anything to add? I don't, Judge. I told my client about the hearing today. I got no response. I have no position to advocate for. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Potts? Uh, yes, Your Honor. You know, this one This one is tough. It's sort of brain versus heart uh, from, from my perspective and, and from what I've seen. Um, you know, I have no reason to doubt Miss Gilmore. Uh, she felt she very clearly saw Mr. Garner there. When I look at the picture and then when he showed us his head shaved up halfway today, um, it's the same haircut, which is a very unique haircut when you look at the back of the photo. Uh, Miss Vanna also addressed some of the comments that the children made about daddy being there recently. And um, Amaya does call Chris dad or daddy, usually daddy. So you know, I, I think that that you know, looking at that type of evidence, um, to me, I'm I'm thinking somebody named Daddy was there. Somebody named Daddy brought the brought the dog some some dog food, and somebody named Daddy helped him climb a tree. Um, so I've got that part, and then I've got the other part where, which is the heart part, which is I know the girls love their mother. I know they're very happy there. Um, I know they want to be there. I would hate very much to disrupt a monitored return, at, particularly at this stage, because it would be so traumatic for those children. Um, I'm worried about uh, Miss Gross' ability to be protective when those are their kids and she lives there at home, you know, by herself. It's a hard thing to do. I think she's trying. I think she's worked hard. You know, I agree with all those things. Um so it's just it's it's a really really tough call. I mean, my brain says, yeah, I think that I think that Daddy has been there. I think Chris has been there, or at least Jason. But but on the other hand, um, you know, disrupting it at this point would be a, a really really tough call because they are happy, they are settled in, they do very much want to be there with their mom, and there's a lot of things she does that she does good for them. She really does. So. Um, I'm glad you're the judge and I'm not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, somebody send me those pictures so I can look at them, uh, you know, pull them up. I'm going to look at them big before I really make a decision. Um, but I'll make one pretty quick once I get those, once I get the pictures, I'll look at them and I'll, then I'll email y'all in just a minute. Um, Ms. Groff, I, I, I don't, I, I want to see the pictures, but I want to say, I think you pretty, by my questions to you, I think you pretty much understand how I feel about any of these dads being around these children. And I, I guarantee it, it would not make, it, you know, even with all of the good that you've done in this case, you're a smart young lady and you fought hard. I mean, you got to, you're, you're going to try to get a CPA job. I mean, that's really hard. I, I wouldn't, I couldn't do that. And, you know, I, I don't think that you're, I, I just cannot imagine somebody as smart as you are letting these guys back into these kids' lives. Okay. You're a nice lady. There's a lot of fish in the sea. And, why you would want to hang around people like this. I don't get it. I am very happy on my own, not looking for any kind of relationship right now. Well, and you have, I mean, you have family support and I bet that your family 
does not think real highly of the two dads either. Yeah, nobody, nobody does. Ms. Poss, has anybody paid any child support? No, Your Honor. Well, Ms. Groth, I mean, that, you know, I know not everything's always based on money, but, you know, you having four kids, three that are in this case, I mean, the dad's child support is minimal, minimal. I, I would hope that that would be a good enough reason for you to say, you know, you can't even pay me any, any you know, can't even pay $50 out of the 200 that's ordered. You know, why, why, why should I let you be around the kids? And I know you can't really do, can't, uh, what's the word, cushion child support around visitation, but during a CPS case, you can, you can. So oh. I, I don't know. I, I, it, there's a lot of people that would be very, very, very disappointed in you. If, if these guys were in your life, even Mr. Edwards, I know we didn't talk about him so much today, but still you, you get it. I've been a single mom for a long time. And the stance that I've always taken is um, that I don't want them to be revolving door fathers. Um, I don't want them to have a dad one day and not the next. I feel like a better way to do it is to cold turkey. If they're not going to be the kind of father they need, they need to not be in their life at all because um, see with Jason, he would, show up sometimes and then not sometimes and that hurts them more than never seeing their father at all so i believe with anastasia not remembering him and ford having never met him that that's probably the best like for better for them than anything else well that makes sense so um okay well, I, I can promise you, I'm, I'm going to think about, remind me again, where were the children before we uh, did the monitor return to Miss uh, Groff? Were yeah, they involved? Aunt Lisa. Aunt Lisa. Aunt Lisa. I, you all talked at the same time, but I didn't understand y'all. Sorry, they were with my Aunt Lisa. Okay. And where does Lisa live? In Marble Falls. Uh, okay. Just like 10, 15 miles away from me. Have the kids seen Lisa since they've been home with you, ma'am? Yes, about two days ago. Just two days ago or any other times during the six-month monitored return? Many times. Okay. So you still get along with her and everything? Yes. She has been working a lot lately. So if, uh, she, um, Anastasia actually has surgery at 6 a.m. tomorrow. and She will not be able to take her to that. Um, I will need, I mean, it, it is, of course, up to you of whatever you uh, rule. But um, I do need to take anesthesia to surgery tomorrow morning. What kind of surgery? It's just tubes in her ears. Tubes, is that what she said? Yes. Okay. And where's the surgery? In Marble Falls as well, at the hospital. Okay. Does CPS know about that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, somebody send me the pictures and I'll look at them and I'll come back to y'all and just, just see what time it is. I just, I sent them out, Judge, a few minutes ago. Okay, I have one o'clock, so I'll look, I'll look at it right now and let y'all know. Okay. Okay, Ms. Groff, whichever way I go, you know you have a service plan. You have to comply. Your criminal rights be subject to termination, okay? Yes. And also, regardless of whichever way I go, we're set for court on February 6th, our next hearing. Whether it's a perm hearing or a final trial, that is our next court date. Okay.